it, this chapter is the start of the package component section and the objectives are to learn how, how to organize functions in files um, maintain a, a consistent coding style and compare and contrast functions in a package versus functions in a script um, so the only uh, one hard rule um, that that everyone must follow is that uh, all the function definitions uh, have to be stored in .r files inside an R directory, and that directory can have um, subfolders or subdirectories. So. Uh, um, all, all the files, um, the convention is to use uh, files that have meaningful uh, names and, and convey we, which functions are stored within the file. Um, there are two extremes that are considered bad, but there are exceptions. So uh, the, the one extreme is having one file per function and the other one is having all the functions in the same the same file, um, and usually uh, what you're you're gonna have is um, functions that are a, a, a very large function stored in in one, uh, one file with lots of documentation. Uh, other um, ways of organizing is having a, a main function and supporting functions in one file. Uh, for example, um, there's the tidyr separate function and that file has the main separate function and other smaller helper functions that uh, help um, achieve, achieve that functionality. And, and another way to uh, organize functions is, is to have a, a family of related functions in one file. Uh, and the example is all, all the rectangle uh, functions that are used in Tidyr. Um, and uh, the, the, the on count function um, is the one exception that it follows the the extreme uh, the extreme example of only having one function in the file but it's because it doesn't uh, it, it can't be neatly uh, fit fitted in any other grouping um and the, uh, the final convention that is used is that smaller helper functions that that can be uh, assigned to uh, to a specific file are, are usually stored in uh, utils.r uh, file. Um, the other thing that's, that was highlighted is that when you're uh, developing your package, uh, use the fast feedback loop, loop uh, of using load all and the, the benefit of this, uh, uh, instead of using, uh, of sourcing the functions you're, you're working on, on is that this uh, um, helper function helps you set up your, your environment like, uh, like the namespace uh, would, be, would be when you load a, a package. Um, and so the the, the functions uh, that you're gonna use in your package should follow uh, a coding style. The coding style that the book rec recommends is the Tidyverse style guide um, that tells you that what and why of uh, how to style uh, all your code. And then there's a styler package that helps you um, Restyle uh, your functions and your code to follow to follow the tidyverse style, style style guide. So th these fun functions are helpful, so you don't have to uh, use your brain power to uh, 
check if you have the right indentations, you you can just call the 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 functions to to help you with manage uh, the conventions, and you can run it uh, on an entire package or um, on a um, on a directory a folder of files, or you can uh, use them on a specific uh, highlighted vector or or a single file. Um, and then uh, when you're coding, it's also important to understand when the code is being executed. So when you're running scripts in, uh, and working interactively, um, the code is run when you run it. <laughs> this is a bit redundant, but it's important uh, to understand the difference when you're building a package. And uh, when you, uh, you build up a, a package, the, the code is run when the package is built. So there are um, different time. So if you download a, a package from CRAN, uh, CRAN is the, like the, I don't know, the computer in charge of building the file. And um, so that's gonna be different from someone who builds the the package from source, for example, if you're using I don't know a, a, like a, a Linux distribution, um, and that difference um, is important because uh, the uh, the the results of of your of your functions can change. Uh, if you don't build, uh, if you don't consider this when creating your functions, they can cause uh, problems uh, when trying to uh, load and, and run uh, your code. So um, for example, if the, the package is built by CRAN, um, the time CRAN takes to uh, build the package is called the build time. And when you uh, install it in your computer and load the package, that's gonna be called uh, load time. And what you're lo loading are the cached results from the from the build uh, that CRAN executed. So uh, that means that uh, for macOS and Windows users. Uh, the build time is whenever CRAN built the binary package. And for those who install packages from source, the build time is when they build and install the package on their machine. Um, and just as a note, the, the package, uh, when, when you're talking about uh, builds, it's, um, it's um, talking about, about running this command, the rscmd install build. It's not uh, talking about the rscmd build command. That that one, the second one, it just creates a, a bundle package or a, a source tarball. So the the important of the importance of understanding this is that, for example, if you run the function sys.time, in an interactive R script, uh, the time uh, it, it, it's gonna um, uh, output is the t time when the script was run. But in a package, it's gonna tell you uh, the time when the package was built. So if it's a, a binary that CRAN uh, executed, it's gonna tell you the time when that package was built on CRAN. So, um, uh, this was a, a real world example from the uh, shiny bootstrap 2 package they had um a, a dependency that used um uh, this function the system file function and instead of uh, using the the system Instead of calling it like a function, it defined the the results uh, as an object. So if the 
if if this was run by CRAN, the the system files uh, that appeared cached in the in the package were the the settings from the can the CRAN machine that 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 built them instead of the machine uh, where the user was trying to load and uh, trying to load the, the package. So the the change that was made uh, was to instead of calling the table that, that a table dependency object, they created an, a new function. Uh, the the uh, data dependency function and it's just that little change if, if uh, i don't know if, if you can see it but the code is mostly the same and the only change they made is uh, making a function with no uh, arguments or parameters and and calling the calling the same list uh, that run the the same code and uh, making that small change may, uh, made it possible to uh, for it to work and, and not cause the the problems that uh, that calling uh, the data table dependency without a function. And another real world example is uh, if you need to use a, a function from another package, you shouldn't um, call the function and assign it to an object. Instead, you should uh, alias the function and so uh, what's what the benefit of that it is that it's if the there's a bug in the function you you're using um the and and the developers of, of that uh, function correct the bug uh, when the user updates that package it automatic automatic uh, automatic sorry that words causes problems <laughs> no worries uh, automatically um will be updated and it, it will work with your with your uh with your package and and you you won't have to worry about uh, having to update the the functionality of that that uh, function that belongs to another package. Um, so when uh, developing packages, you also have to respect the R landscape. That means that people will use your package in situations that you've never imagined. And so this means that you have to pay attention uh, not only to the available functions and objects, but all the global settings uh, in the R session. So uh, there are certain uh, functions that change the R landscape. And these are uh, loading a package with library, uh, changing global options with the options function, and changing the working directory. So the uh, you know that uh, uh, you have changed the R landscape if a function, uh, if the behavior of a function uh, differs uh, before and after uh, running your function. So um, these are, uh, you should avoid changing the, the landscape with your functions uh, so that you don't affect the, the functionality of other packages that the user was uh, or behaviors that the user was expecting. So that means uh, not using library or require, but if you need to specify a, a packages, uh, other packages, you should add them to the, the description file. And, and when it, you should all, and never use the, the uh, source function to load from a file, and these are other examples of options that you use uh, carefully. And the flip side is that you uh, um, you shouldn't uh, rely on the user's landscape. Also. So you shouldn't uh, assume that uh, 
all, all of the users have the same set, settings or the same, same system variables. That means that you can change certain options, but you should clean up after yourself. So there's two options to manage state. One is using the package with R uh, that's inspired from the, the base uh, uh, function on exit. Uh, there's a, a function called with defer and what it does is capture the, the original state or the original R landscape that you, the user had and then schedule its eventual re restoration and then make the, the change. Like for example, um, if uh, in, in the following function, um, it, it's gonna store the, the options in, um, in a variable called old and after the the function completes and exits, it's gonna um, restore those settings. Um, Can I it, ask, sorry, just to interrupt mm -hmm. quickly. Um, I, I, I didn't really understand this bit all that well, but that was probably because I didn't really look into with R all that much. But I thought if anyone here had any experience with this, because it doesn't make much sense, say you, you specify the current environment, but then here it looks like they do some function stuff first with the three dots. Then they do this mm -hmm. like in the middle of the function, then they do more stuff. And it doesn't even make sense. I would have thought like that, defer option would be at the very, very end of the function, like the last step in the function. It's like do all the stuff of the function, return your objects and then defer. But it, it sounds like what they're suggesting is you can sort of put the defer option anywhere in the function and it will still do that on exit. So I don't know if people have any experience with that or. Yeah, I've used the on exit function and you can specify it anywhere. I usually, usually you should use it when connecting to databases. So it on exit, it disconnects from the, from the connection, and uh, yes, uh, you you can specify it anywhere. And after the function finishes executing, it's gonna use the restore the state either with the defer function or the on exit. Yeah, but you so still need to somehow... specify the changes first, though. So like you you change the environment first, but you can put the defer option anywhere. Interesting. I... I, yeah, I think you wanna. I think what they're saying is you need to always have it in a pair. Like you change okay. it, and then you need to add what you changed to this either defer or on exit. So that way, when it finishes, like what Sophie was saying, it'll run everything to put it back. Yeah, and and what I read is that the the fair um, function is. Um, like it's additive, so it's gonna uh, like it, I don't know. It has like a queue of the changes it has to revert, and it's gonna go. I think it's first, uh, first in, first out. So the first change you revert is the first change it's gonna. The first change you make is the first change it's gonna revert back. And that was the difference between the uh, defer function and the on exit. So if you wanted to, um, uh, apparently on exit, if you don't add the uh, add equals true par uh, parameter, uh, it's gonna um, execute only the like the the last command. If you add you use the add true, it's gonna um, it, it it will list all of the like the cleanup tasks it has to. Um, so the other benefit of using the fair is that you can use it to code interactively, um, and so you can change your Go environment and then uh, revert it with the deferred uh, clear function. And so um, the, the other option, instead of using a pa package and adding that dependency, is using the, the on exit uh, from the uh, from the, the base. And it, it's similar, but uh, the thing that, that you, uh, you have to add the uh, add true arguments uh, so that 
it it makes a list of all the tasks it has of all of the cleanup tasks uh, it has to run through instead of like overriding the tasks. Um, and so um, uh, you you also should um, isolate isolate side effects. Um, so it's good practice to have separate fun functions uh, if if you're doing m more than one uh, side effect. So for example, if you have a, a function uh, that produces uh, a, a, a plot, you should divide it into the data wrangling and the plotting uh, in, uh, functions. Uh, so they're separate. And you can reuse them for, for for example, you can reuse the the data wrangling output for other no, for other other things. Um, and usually, when you do need side effects, uh, the the common way um, to add them is to use onload and unattach. Uh, Usually, the onload is the one that's going to be used mo most frequently. And this is uh, done to display messages when your package loads or to set custom options with your package. Um, and so th these functions are um, are usually stored in the in the ccc.r uh, file. And if you do uh, uh, an unload, um, uh, you, you should also unload to clean up any side effects. Um, and the other thing that is recommended is to uh, do constant health checks. So every time you uh, create a new function, you should document it and then use the, the document function to, to make any changes to the, to the documentation and help files and the namespace. And you should uh, constantly run load all to see that um, everything is working and, and your functions are running uh, like you want them to. And, and then you should create interactive examples and if everything is working fine, then you should run your tests and finally the, the check function. And so uh, usually uh, these steps are run frequently, uh, usually uh, every several, several hours or days. And, and the goal is to have that fast feedback uh, because um, if you, if you don't do that, you, you you can create a dysfunctional workflow uh, that looks like the uh, this list that is just editing your functions and, and uh, occasionally uh, making sure that then that, that they work, but you only document them once the code is done and you only test once the code is done. And so what, what that's going to cause is uh, you don't know where you introduce bugs. And so it's harder to, to make changes if you have to, uh, if you've made, um, I don't know, changes a, a month ago, uh, it's harder to remember wh what's been done. And if you follow the like the, the, advi the advised workflow, um, it's easier to catch bugs and errors as they are happening, and 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 it makes it easier to correct and and build a like a a better package. And the final chapter was just uh, uh, tips to submit uh, uh, to CRAN and. A CRAN doesn't accept um, Unicode characters. It only accepts ASCII characters. So uh, usually um, it's going to throw an error if you try to submit when, with any special characters. And it, you can escape them, the Unicode characters, and 
uh, if there is um, and you can uh, I don't uh, learn the the code using the the stringy tree escape uh, Unicode function. Yeah, and so um, it basically it's uh, when when adding R code to your package, uh, you should um, uh, try to get fast feedback and and try not to make any changes to the to the user's environment. And if you're gonna make them, you should revert them back when when your code is finished uh, executing. Yeah, so that's it. Thanks. Yeah, great. Thank you. I, I wish I had read this uh, like two weeks ago. Because <laughs> I was writing, I've been writing my exams in this, in our markdown, and I had some Unicode problem from copying and pasting from test banks. And they showed that function to like find it everywhere. Would have been yeah. nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know any other teachers. Yeah, it's this like exams package. It's pretty cool. Oh, there's the package called exams? Yeah, so you write each question in our markdown file separately with, mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember the format. There's like a specific format you have to use and it, but the package also, and then you can like randomize the options and you can like have more options than like number of choices. And the package has functions to like, create extra options for you so like you only have to give it the answer and then you can tell it if it's a numeric so all my exams are multiple choice so I just make oh, really? like mm -hmm. random <laughs> answers yeah. with it I um, mean great great simple yeah you actually yeah can do this version yeah that one yeah our exams yeah, yeah you can do this type this template where like if you scan in the, if you print it in a specific way and have them fill out these boxes and scan it in, you can also run a function to grade it. But I've just, they just use the regular scantrons in my class and the oh. TAs just put it in the machine for me. <laughs> <laughs> Very useful. It's kind of fun. And you can have it like, make exams that you can import into online things like Moodle and I think Canvas actually. It's beyond, that's like beyond me. I mean, <laughs> uh, it's pretty cool. I'm sure there's an R package out there for like grading these exams. Yeah, yeah. So in that package, if you use this, there's a uh, function or there's like, Yeah, this NOPS, I don't know. But anyway, I think that was one motivation for why they built this package was for, you know, those like 500, 500 person common exams. And then yeah. they scanned them in here. And then they can like rate it. As But you yeah, you have to like scan the image and then it can grade the image for you wow um but i mean that's kind of i guess the only advantage is the students don't have to purchase a scantron i i guess i don't see i'm only managing 60 students so for me it's probably not that big of a deal mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah i don't know i also was wondering about um I definitely use set dot seed in some of my functions, and I know functions that I give seeds to. So I I need to like look and see how they how they do it. Yeah. You mean like so is really like a package that wrap other like software? With yeah, probably, yeah, like manage environments. Yeah, like in Stan, right? So For like example, if I run a Stan model. I can 
give it a seed. Oh, I believe seed. using a set dot seed. No, like it's an argument. Oh, let me double check. I guess they probably just convert it back for me. Never. Yeah. Let me just look. R stand sampling. Okay, I'm checking like some some package yeah. here. It's full of no. set environment and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like if I use just like the sampling function from R stand, you can give it a seed. But yeah, it must just un undo it. I don't know. Well, I guess maybe it's okay because it's user specified, like it's an argument. So. I mean, it's I an know. argument, it's, it's inside a function, no? Yeah, so but you... it's a, a user supplied argument. Oh, so I okay. wonder if that's not the same thing what they're saying. Right? Like there's I think what they're saying is you change it without asking the user. Yeah, I think so. I, okay. I do not know Stan enough, but like if you change that at the beginning of Stan, does it keep the same seed or do you be able to have another seed? Um, it's only um, it may also it may also be that, that the seed is passed to stand directly and never actually goes to R. So like you're setting seed, it gets passed to C plus plus runs and never actually sets the stand the R seed. Well, I think in that case it would probably be fine. Maybe I mean you are you are modifying the landscape. Yeah, but stand yeah stand is C ultimately in the end, <laughs> so. Yeah, so you're not actually modifying the R. Well, I, I mean, I don't know, but it's possible that they're not modifying the R C, the, the, the set C in R, but modifying the sort of temporary C++ yeah. environment that's created when you want to model. That's perhaps. true. Yeah, that's a good point. I should see if I can find an, another function. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can copy past like this, this huge function that's plenty of like, that's full of modifying environment system. But that's the point of it. But so uh, yeah, like you can say like this is this is an init function that's used for another another like software that's called Grass, like the herbs, and uh, it's full of this set environment because like this uh, software needs an environment, like mm -hmm. and it needs to set it up. So you are basically checking where it could be and you are modifying it. But I do not know. Uh, where well, like that remove it it doesn't it, it seem like the, the users of stuff but if you just check like uh, the this huge list of stuff it's mostly like dear create also like you know you are creating file inside the user environment so you are mm -hmm. modifying the i mean directly like what's happened and but like at the end you delete it or not like i have to check that it's yeah so sometimes you do that too. <laughs> yeah. So like you are also like searching for Python paths and stuff like that. So it's. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I included the the VVV question that we had in chat into the spreadsheet for Jenny. Sweet. Yeah. Are we are we meeting Jenny in March of next year? I think so. Okay. Hopefully uh, we don't forget like why we asked. <laughs> <laughs> but then... We just watch the videos, right? We can study before. Yeah. <laughs> uh... I think we've done the past four months. I think she's in Canada, like in in uh, in British Columbia. So she's far. Yeah. Like, I, I'm, I'm, my computer is safe. She will not burn it. So kind of. <laughs> <laughs> she's pretty close to where I live. <laughs> uh, as yeah. long as like you know, I think like my bad computing 
com uh, computer practice will be safe. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, I will try like to build a small package, like because like uh, I feel like I'm reading a lot, but I'm not implementing uh, enough. Yeah. And uh, uh, it seems simple, but like even like I have some like shiny apps that will put into a package that basically change anything about the shiny app. So I can see like how it fell. And also mm -hmm. shiny app are good at side effects. So <laughs> probably break everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I don't know if you have started using package, but I need to try at least for one crappy project and see. Right. And see myself failing. Yeah, yeah. it's in my, my to-do list, but yeah, I need, I need to start. <laughs> Otherwise I'm gonna forget everything we've read. Yeah, I am, let me see if I can find it. I am using a package that someone else put together, but like, I think not very, like a PhD student made it. Oh, PhD students. They were <laughs> <laughs> no, they're great, right? They do lots of work for you. But uh, yeah. he's left and uh, I don't know. I think you I left. That. He graduated. I shouldn't say he left. He graduated. Also, he's not maintaining the package. Yeah. That totally makes sense. And it, it, I'm still like... using it, but I've like, <laughs> I think I mentioned before. So I'm guessing he didn't use like these checks and stuff because I, when I first started using it, I, I manually added things to the namespace <laughs> because he didn't export them, but like some function, like I needed them in my wrapper, I guess. Yeah. It would have still passed because my function wasn't there. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, I, I like source i like low i library i build this package but then i source my function on top of it i don't know it's not good it's really not good uh, yeah i so think I, like i shouldn't say I, I think he did a great job on the package i think i just don't know what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> but the no, original but you... the he actually rewrote a package that a uh, preceding student before him wrote and that person had like the plotting and the like everything in one function and <laughs> that, that broke some of those rules we read today <laughs> yeah my old code <laughs> does not follow those rules. yeah and I don't know how he set it up but he also had the he definitely changed like the landscape because he had the plots pop up in like a separate paint like window even in our studio and it kind of messed with like the graphics oh that was weird kind of like more like matte plot oh sorry i pulled it uh <laughs> no matt 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 lab like how matt lab like just opens up yeah but yeah, I think it's a useful advice like to run this check. Like this is kind of the same idea that test. You should test yeah. frequently and you should run like uh, automatic stuff frequently. Yeah. It's the same yeah. idea like with, with Git, like you should commit frequently. Right. And uh, this is like, uh, I think like this, you know, like I have seen this, this graphic, like less you do more pain you are and more you do less pain. I don't know if it's... <laughs> <laughs> Which kind of I think it's like some uh, uh, like some exponential reverse exponential like where like you do never like you have huge pain and like just doing a bit like reduce the pain like tremendously uh, yeah no pain but, yeah, I think this is a good advice that I do not follow enough so that I yeah. will definitely try to 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 do better so, so yeah. for. Uh, I think, yeah, like 7.5. I mean, it, it seemed like their advice was just to be more mindful about what you're running. That's not a function, but is there any way locally to sort of test, like make your computer a different machine or something? I don't know, not that. You can, you can always yeah. use the virtual machine or Docker container with also like distribution. Huh. 
like it's depend of what you are using but uh yeah the, yeah it's really virtual machine I'm, I'm a bit old i haven't touched too much docker and stuff like that but we use a virtual machine before so uh yeah this is really like what we've done uh, because like the gis like geographical information system library uh the kind of a mess i mean we are a small community so there's that uh, less stuff like going uh so usually like we build uh, with a windows a mac and uh, a linux and check it uh because like students obviously have you know they have windows they have mac they have linux whatever so usually we use it to build virtual machine to test some stuff before mm. teaching yeah uh so this yeah, is I but i i think this was like you know 10 years ago i think like you have better way of doing it now, but I do not know how to do it. Yeah. Maybe Docker's. I don't know how it works exactly. I mean, I know I can run Docker container, but that's that's all. Yeah. Because yeah. I I think you should you should ask coworkers that's do their ops and stuff like that. Like if you have like you know an IT department or uh, some people like that. This is like the place where you know you send a random email. Hopefully, three months later you have like an answer. And maybe <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I will do something like that, but uh, without without putting my help too much on it. But you know, yeah. there, there could be some things that they are interested in. You are a team. You should. You are not supposed to work alone. I feel. Yeah. But. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I guess uh, I can send it to my students and say, test this for me. Oh, this is another option. <laughs> That's the IT department. <laughs> the PC students. Does this work on your computer? Bonus points for the exam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not teaching my students any software, unfortunately. <laughs> not this semester, next semester. Okay. Yeah. So that that's maybe someone like uh, have something to say. Or go. I mean, we have still a bit of time. So. Yeah. Oh, I was wondering. Um, has anyone used the style R package to like style an entire package? So the style underscore package function. No. Well, that sounds that. interesting. I I was wondering. I have used in our studio. Like, there's a under code it will like reformat code and i was wondering if it's the same as like the style code i think this is yeah oh, okay. oh it's the same thing yeah but I, does style package only change indentation or does it change name file name uh, i think it it changes yeah in the it makes the changes uh, that are in the style guide. So I think it no, not only changes in indentations, but I think the how the like the the arguments are. Mm. I, I don't know. I, I, and um, the yeah, line, the line width. Yeah, the line width. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm fine with using it, like, for a function or on our script but i don't know like like if i use it on an entire package like i, I won't know what changes it will, will it tell you what changes it made that's what mm -hmm. i was saying make sure you only use it with version control <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> git will t they deferred that to git i guess to tell you what yeah. the changes are uh, which that helps yeah <laughs> Yeah, but I, I would find it scary to use it in a whole package. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, you just fork your, yeah. make a new branch and see what happens and then just delete that. <laughs> yeah. Just never merge it into the master branch. <laughs> yeah. On Friday. On Friday. That's to be nice. Uh, I, I think like I don't know. Uh, I I do not. Uh, I think I respect like this style guide quite a lot. Mm -hmm. 
just like uh, it, it doesn't take me too much brain uh, cell to do it like uh, maybe like a maniac or something like that like uh, I was surprised like because I, I read it because you know like this is something that you can always improve but I, while reading it I said oh this is something that I do so as I have been taught well it's also an option <laughs> And I, or as I like, it's mostly like, I don't know, comments, a lot, lot of them are common sense, but it's really yeah. sometimes you break it. The only yeah. qualm I've ever had with a style guide is um, the demand that left a sign needs to be done, done with a left arrow rather than equals. Oh, um, yeah. The only, so uh, the only, aside from maybe, uh, you know, beyond the single user environment, um, the only time that it matters is if you do like a B is stored into A and C is stored into B. If you do that on a single line, then it matters. You can't do that with equal signs. But if you do left a sign with the arrow, you can do that. Yeah. And I would never in my life do that. I don't know why um, someone would choose to do that. I guess I guess I know why. But um, anyway. The double, yeah, I've I've done that when I have to initialize a lot of empty things. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very readable though, right? Having all those like left-hand signs on one line. I like it. I do it a lot. <laughs> yeah, I adapted it. Yeah, I, I like it. I guess I remember reading why, but then I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's 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 uh, it's practic when you need to share codes on Stack Overflow and stuff like that because you know you like you have the minimum amount of screen and if you analyze like I don't know five variable, uh, it's like like five lane and uh, well just one lane is enough. Uh. But yeah, I sometimes also load some library like you know with semicolon. Those are libraries. <laughs> but yeah. Sometimes it may, I mean, sometimes, yeah, but I, I agree it's not great. Hmm. I, I got used to the RStudio shortcut, so I don't know. It's like muscle memory, you know? Yeah, me too. I heard that Python uses the equal sign for assigning variables. Yeah. Like they don't have the, the what do you call it? I mean, you can, you, you can use equal also in R. It doesn't change anything. OK, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, that... but I don't like Python, so I try to avoid using the equal, the equal sign. Mm -hmm. That's that's why uh, I use the equal sign in R to, to do left assign is because I came up using C and SAS, both of which use left assign with the equal sign. So it's just kind of like one easier way to switch between the two Yeah, um, mentally. Makes sense. Consistency. And some communities prefer like the equal assignment. Really, which community? I uh, the GIS that. one. The, really, they the, prefer equal sign. Yeah, they prefer the equal sign. Yeah, this is the. Um, it, it's it's appeared like to have been a huge debate. I was happy that I wasn't here this day <laughs> because I used the equal. Uh, I mean, I used the R assignments, but uh, when I when I'm like coding for for them or with them, I use the equal. And, you know. Oh like on few step like you are oh fuck I screw up then you correct it and after like you, you change it it's I do not think it's a big deal some people like you know like we fight all the world for that yeah. <laughs> anyway uh, if if I know like the rules you know if the rules are clear um, and yeah, of course. I, I can follow them and, and that's it and obviously <laughs> obviously like that's when like you know the style our package or whatever so automation come and correct every error you could have done it and this is where you save cell brain cell i feel but yeah python is good i mean i'm not that good with it but uh, i would say it's not that oh i mean it's not the language I, that's helpful i heard in python it's like really hard to install packages yeah, oh, yeah. like coming from r like that just like blows my mind yeah, it's, I, I, I'm learning at work because I have to use Python now. And like it took me a month to be able to properly install. Yeah, because it, it not only Python is hard, but we had to use like a an internal repository. And I don't know. 
I learned a lot about proxies that I wish I could forget. <laughs> it, it was really annoying. And, and using R, you just uh, ask for access to CRAN and that's it. Yeah. It's no easy peasy. Easy peasy. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I love R. Circling back to the chapter, the book chapter that we just read. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, the when we when you su submit to CRAN, I've never submitted to CRAN, but does it do like an automatic style R check and like rejects you if you don't follow the appropriate style? Or is it just like any style is fine? You could have your entire package in one line of code with, you know, or, you know, semicolons for every uh, separating every line. That's fine. Um, like, does what does it do? Is that one of the checks that it does? I think that's something that we've talked about this book, but um, if if uh, if it has, I haven't seen it. Um, I don't know if it checks the style, but it does a lot of checks. I, I remember the last controversy. It checked the HTML uh, output of the help files, and it it rejected or it gave notice to a lot of packages. Yeah, it's because of screen readers, like. Uh... The one of the main, uh, I mean, it's pretty famous, like Brian Replay, you can call him. Uh, I mean, it's it's kind of the god of spatial statistic. You know, like uh, we are like uh, burning candles. Uh, and he, uh, he, he, do, he do not read well. And he's the one who provide like a lot of binary package. So it, to long time, for a long time, he was the one who was, who was compiling the binary for Windows users. So it's kind of like, uh, and he's the one on, on CRAM. Uh, and, uh, he, he, I think he, he, needed, he uses screen readers and screen readers uh, when they uh, read uh, HTML uh, values. This is what you call them, values, I think, in English. Yes, the same word in French, values. Uh, you know, like HTML is a, uh, is a markup language. So are you call like uh, the. Uh, it's, it's, it, oh, it, it's, yeah, yeah. The, um, you have to start something and close it. I don't know how you call that, the, what you start and what you close in English. Anyway, so when screen readers are, are going into that, they, they totally screw screw up. <laughs> oh, I see. So this is for like so for people who have like trouble um, with their vision, uh, this doesn't help. So that's why like for disability people, people who have yeah. disability, it's bad. So CRAN enforces it uh, very strongly. Uh, I think it's. It's it, you have backlash because people do not understand well. That's people, real people, like could not effectively read, like because they need like uh, to read your code another way. And uh, yeah, so that I think this was like well, it's explained a bit of it, but uh, it doesn't explain everything about CRAN. But uh, yeah, so that's what. Yeah. But it, I, yeah, to answer the question, I do not think like they, they care about style. To have like checked like some codes uh, on cross page. Yeah, it's, a wide, it's a wide worm. I think they do. <laughs> I'm just looking on the, the documentation. I mean, they really put an emphasis on the description and like the documentation of your package needs to be good. But I guess maybe the code doesn't. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we, we could try to submit a, a dummy package to see if it passes. <laughs> There's like plenty of error. In <laughs> Everything <laughs> on one line. <laughs> Amazing. We I mean, try to submit the reg excite package. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wonder if it's on there. I wonder if someone's done it already. It could be the first one to try. <laughs> Monumental moment for this book club. Yeah. And see, it's gonna be like fun, like with like every step that you should undo. <laughs> <laughs> and after we can all go on Twitter or whatever and complain. Yeah. <laughs> and then Jenny will come on in March and ask us why oh we did. Oh my god! Don't tell on my address. <laughs> <laughs> and burn all our computers to find. That's it. That's be like a fun project. It's. <laughs> It's not on CRAN. I'm looking at the list of all available packages and the Regic site one was mm -hmm. called, whatever it is, it's not on there. All right. 
what to do. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> or take three, that's my assignment. <laughs> I, I do not want to maintain it. It's too much work. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys. Well, um, so next week we have like week off. Yeah. Are we good with I, that? I think I updated the schedule. Okay, so in two okay. weeks, Oluwa for me will do chapter eight. And then we'll do nine and ten the week after that. Yeah, we need a volunteer. Uh, let me check. I haven't uh, done anything, so but could be my time to do it. All right, check your schedule and then yeah. Yeah, no, I probably could. You just have to. Uh, All right, thanks Found again, it. Sophie. Thanks, Sophie, for presenting. Yeah, thanks, Sophie, a lot. It was great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See everyone will... in two weeks. Yeah, have a happy Thanksgiving for people who are Yeah, doing happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, enjoy happy your holidays. Bye. Bye. Yeah.